Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Player Profile and Projections here in Port St. Lucie at Met Spring Training. If you couldn't tell by my tank top that I got to buy at the stadium yesterday. Very also, happy about it. if you're watching on YouTube, Whew. Pipe St. Lucie. You're pipes showing off Lucie? the pipes. Oh, I guess so. Look Something like that. Look at these. Come on, guys. Come on. <sighs> I'm wearing the tank today because we're talking about the tank Pete Alonzo. The polar bear himself. Mm. This is a fun one. What a year he had last year. What Pretty a year. Pretty spectacular. Let's just run right into the stats. Okay. 160 games played. That's Ooh. kind of a staple for him. Yep. 685 plate appearances, 27 doubles, 40 homers. That gives you a slugging percentage of 518. 131 RBI. That's amazing. That'll give you 95 runs, 67 walks, 16 of those being intentional walks. Yes, sir. And he did have five stolen bases. Not his, a big deal. We can talk about it. His first caught stealing. But he did hit 271 with a 352 on base percentage, a weighted one runs created plus of a 143, giving him a 4.0 F war. Guy's spectacular. What a year he had. He was an absolute stalwart. Batting cleanup every single day. What a what a joy to watch him play every day. An integral cog of the Mets lineup. Absolutely necessary. 160 games, not to be understated. Clocking in day in and day out. Playing first base, sometimes DHing Pete Alonso was. And yeah, another 40 home run season to add to his catalog. That's kind of become the expectation for him, which anytime you have a guy in the lineup that is expected to give you 40 bare minimum, you're in a pretty good spot. Also set the single season Mets record for RBIs in a season. I know there's a lot of RBI guys that are not into the stat anymore. I fully am. I I like RBIs. It's one of the counting stats that I still stick by. And 131 is a crazy amount, somehow beating out the 120 that he had in his rookie season where he hit 53 home runs. Uh, somehow like an underrated season from Pete Alonso. Uh, not to mention the fact that the guy that hits in front of him, Francisco Lindor, also knocked in 100. Yep. It's wild. Absolutely. And having that at three and four has completely changed the outlook of the Mets as a franchise. But for Pete Alonso, you know, we're looking at another season where we're fully expecting him to be in that MVP conversation. He's kind of been there every full season of his career, I think. 2021, I look at these stats and I see the 863 OPS. I see 37 home runs. And in comparison, I, I still feel like there's another level that Pete Alonso can get to even in these past two years where he's been excellent for the Mets. Yeah, I think he, he's got another gear in there. I think he's he figured out he chased the ball a little bit less. He, yep. he put the ball the other way. He was willing to sacrifice a lot of power at times to drive a run in, giving taking what the defense was giving him. It's a very selfless Pete Alonso in this ball club. And that's how you drive in 131. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the chase rate has always kind of been the thing for Pete. He was 24th percentile in 2021. He was 19th percentile last year. It's still something he's improving on in his game, but pretty consistent with his walk rate. I feel like 2021 and 2022, they're very comparable years. It's just the counting stats for RBI went way up, but the same amount of doubles, pretty much the same amount of home runs. Pete Alonso has been the guy for the past two years. But I wonder, is that 53 home run season a fluke, or can Pete Alonso get back to that staggering number of 50 home runs? Is that even in the cards for him? I don't uh, know. I think it absolutely is. You know, there's he's your prototypical power hitter, your throwback first baseman yeah. of days of, of, you know, those power hitting Jason Giambi type, amazing just guys that produce. Yeah. And... That was a huge gap that the New York Mets were missing last year. They still, if you're looking at the team, are missing another huge home run guy. They were hoping for the Kyle Schwarber type free right. agent to come in. Uh, maybe we have some guys to fill in this year. We don't know. Where does he rank according to MLB? Yeah. And this is, first this is baseman, they do the top 10 list for all the positions. Where is he at? So we, we did our own top 10 NL East players, right? I think we had Pete Alonso in like the seven range of all players in the division. And then they MLB Network, they did their own top 10 first baseman list. And Pete Alonso placed fifth, which I'm not upset about, I wouldn't say, because, you know, no reason to get upset over arbitrary rankings. Ahead of him was Jose Abreu, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Freddie Freeman, and Paul Goldschmidt in that order. And he, Pete Alonso was just above Matt Olson. And I feel like Alonzo is a guy that could really figure his way into that three and four range where Vladdy and Jose Abreu are. It's just, I think the defense probably holds him back a little bit. Uh, I think that is going to 
be even more of a thing this season because I without the shift right. that he's going to need to cover a little bit more ground. It's going to be a thing. He works very hard. He's very serviceable at first base, but that's the separator between him and, say, Freddie Freeman. Yeah, of course. And, like, Freddie Freeman, I feel like the defense is such an underrated part of his game. Uh, last year, Pete Alonso outs above average rank was fifth percentile, which is honestly lower than I thought it would have been because I do think that Pete Alonso kind of made some strides last year, showed some sort of improvement, but in the long term, I still feel like his outlook may seem like a designated hitter, and that's not a bad thing because Pete Alonso is the most potent hitter in this Mets lineup, and you want to put him in the situation uh, to succeed as best as possible. Do you, do you have the splits of him as a DH last year? Because I'll they were up right amazing. Now. They I'll were astronomical. Right yeah, I mean, that's something that I definitely noticed uh, throughout the goings of the year last year because I don't mind Pete Alonso at first base. But, yeah, when he was DHing uh, 27 games and 830 OPS, six homers, 25 RBIs, 12 walks. So pretty on par with the first base stats mm-hmm. as well, but still something you like to see from him, a guy that doesn't get his game switched up too much when he is DHing because I've heard that that's kind of a mental thing for a lot of guys who, who are used to going in and out of the dugout throughout the game and not spending that much time on the bench. And he's made it known – publicly that he wants to play first base Which he wants to play want there to hear, yeah sure. absolutely yeah. but also you know when he is in the dh role his offense doesn't slack so right. it's not like a a, a day night kind of thing yeah and a, a big talking point during this offseason was you know the mets brought in all this new talent they extended jeff mcneil which we'll talk about in his episode and for Pete Alonso, he kind of feels like the last piece of the puzzle to fill out the Mets' core for the next five or so years. And we're coming up on his free agency. It's in 2025, which seems like it might be far away, but you know, only two years down the line, that's when Pete Alonso could potentially walk away from the franchise. If, if you're Billy Epler and Steve Cohen, are you, are you feeling the pressure of that right now if Pete Alonso goes out and has another great slugging season? I feel like right now it's it's... It's at that precipice because if he goes to the next year, it'll be a Nimmo situation exactly. where why not feel it out because there's not many people in the game that are like Pete Alonso. They, yes. can, they can hit you 35-plus home runs a year, almost guaranteed. Yeah, and I mean, Alonso is a guy that has been improving in a lot of aspects of his game. He's becoming more feared around the league. I love the stat that Dalton gave us. In the first three years of his career, he had 16 intentional walks. In 2022 alone, he had 16 intentional walks. Also, his strikeout rate has been coming down by each season. We've talked about how he's trying to improve on his whiff rate and things like that. In 2019, it was as high as 26.4% on his strikeout rate. Last year, 18.7%, which is a marginal difference. I think some of the intentional walk issues might be because of the lack of power behind him. I think you pick your poison if you're, if I'm going to circle him in my lineup. And he did a good job of not forcing the issue a lot last year, which means his his, uh, strikeout rate goes down because in years past, especially in that 2021 season, you're going to want that guy to swing the bat because you'll take your chances because of how everyone else just played down. Absolutely. And I mean, we got to see him in the postseason for the first time, which is a lot of fun as well. It was a brief run, but three for 10 with a home run in the postseason. You like that. Hopefully we get a deeper run uh, for Pete Alonso this year. And steamer projections like him at pretty much the same rate that he's been for the past couple of years. 150 games for him this year, uh, 649 plate appearances. 39 home runs, just a shade under 40. I hate that. 27 doubles, 108 RBI, 66 walks, four more stolen bases for the kid. Hopefully no more caught stealings because of me. My bad, guys. <laughs> 260 batting average, 346 on base, a 515 slugging, and the exact same weighted runs created plus as last year, 143. So they pretty much think Pete Alonso is going to be the same guy that he was in years past. Yeah, uh, the weird one, like that's statistically almost identical. Pretty much the same, run it back. Again, we'll take that. The weird one for me is the 150 games. That's pretty low. Pete does not like to take days off. No, which is something I love out of one of our main guys. I would take the over on that. Yes, I would absolutely take the over as (laughs) well. I'm glad you highlighted that too. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna put that as the over under because that to me is an easy one. If you watch this if you watch Pete play, he's not gonna take days off. Yeah, and I mean in every full season of his career. In twenty nineteen, I forgot about this. He he only missed one game that year, 161 games. 152 in 2021, then 160 last year. So Pete Alonso is good for well over 600 plate appearances a year, and that's a guy that you love to take uh, watch take at bats. So I'm really excited for this year. It's kind of another one of those things where it's like we kind of know what to expect, but you know the the higher ceiling could still be there for a guy like Pete. I think it is. I think he's polished up his approach a lot. I think he's matured every year. He's gotten better in an aspect of the game. 
Um, defense is still kind of a, an issue for me, but overall, I mean, what a what an absolute animal at the plate. Also a little bit leaner this year for, uh, per reports, which I guess you could he say is. for a ton of Mets guys who apparently all showed up to camp looking like Greek gods. Uh, which is a good thing when you, you think about it. That's the... It's a weird thing to say after you said they slimmed down, but they're hungry. Right. Not hungry for food, apparently, <laughs> but hungry for a championship because right. these guys went out. It'd be easy to rest, and, and, you know, I just hit 40 home runs or 39 home runs. I'm just going to be the same old Pete. But he worked his butt off in the, in the offseason, and he came in looking lean and mean. Like, I love, I love Pete's belly as much as the next guy, but, like, we got to see him take live at-bats a couple days ago. The, the difference in weight and size is noticeable, which speaks volumes when you can see it with the naked eye. So... I'm really curious to see if that kind of, you know, benefits his athleticism in the field maybe or something like that or if it affects his power at all. But he does look like he's in probably the best shape of his life to yeah, this point. Yeah, as cliche as it sounds, best shape of my life. Uh, just, you know, which I don't think he's actually points. said. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, can I Shockingly, say that? Maybe I'll retract that. I think that he's statement. just stoked. He's I very mean, stoked. I, a lot of people might think the belly is the best shape of his life. You know, That's it's, in right it now. It is a shape, but right? maybe not. <laughs> Over under time? Yeah, let's do it. It's the easiest line to do for a guy like Pete Alonso. I love the line that Max picked. Uh, 39 and a half home runs. Does Pete Alonso put up another 40 bomb? Does he get into the 50 range or does he hang out in that high 30s range that we've seen before? What do you got? I'm taking the over. That's yeah. an easy one for me. I mean, this is an absurd number to say that he's going to get to, but I think his average is above this. I think his his career average for 162 games, 45 home runs. 45 home runs. So he's, you know, he had the how many did he hit? 53. Yep, in his rookie year. His rookie year, 53, he hit 39 last year, 37 and 21. I think he's a more complete hitter and I think he's just going to he's established himself and that that magic number to me of 40 is a big deal, and I think he's going to get it. I could see him pushing 45 to 50 as well. I love that. I'll also take the over. It kind of feels like an easy one because you can't really bet against Pete Alonso to this point. He's just going to continue to put in hard work. I'll pose a fun one to you, though. I got an audible. Oh, another on one? Okay, there. I'm in. Because, uh, you know, it's such a talking point whenever we bring it up. Pete Alonso's stolen bases, one of the sneaky stolen base kings in baseball right now. Bigger bases this year. Pickoff attempts are limited. Does Pete Alonzo get over the five stolen bases that he stole last year, or is he under that? Are pitchers going to be looking out for the polar bear <laughs> running around the base paths? That's a fun one. Uh, I'll let you go first. I'm going to take the over okay. because I feel like, you know, he's a little bit leaner now. That Maybe that means he's a little bit faster. I think five was a career high for him last year. He got caught for the first time, which is totally my fault. My bad. I made a compilation of all stolen bases, said that he never got caught. I think he got caught the next day. It was very close, <laughs> if not the, the very next day. Um, but if he gets caught more that's okay I think he gets over that that mark of five I, I could see it very easily I mean we we talked about Paul Goldschmidt and that the reigning NL MVP right. the guy he swipes so many bags he's a smart base runner quicker I don't think Pete's going to uh steal as many as uh. Goldschmidt <laughs> but I I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under on that simply yeah, because I'm gonna play the odds he's not his sprint speed is an elite can't believe you don't believe in Pete's speed yeah, Paul <laughs> Goldschmidt once stole 32 bases in a season that's crazy Isn't that wild from your first baseman who's also go glove cal caliber and then he puts up an offensive season like that it's it's hard to do win an MVP from first base these days and he definitely earned it last year and Pete I don't I don't, I don't think he's going to touch him on the defensive side, but offensively, I think he can surpass him with the power. Uh, Goldschmidt is an overall great hitter. Yeah. Pete, I think Pete's capable of doing things like that. I think he's going to take another step up this year offensively, and I, I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, if Pete can be the 300 hitter that I think he wants to be, that takes his whole game to another level because that's what Paul Goldschmidt really brings to the table. He batted 317 last year <laughs> in addition to slugging and all that. Paul Goldschmidt's going to be a Hall of Famer. I feel like a lot of people don't really grasp that. He's, oh, already, he's, he's played in uh, Arizona and was hidden there for a long yeah, time. That's true. Uh, he was America's first baseman is what he was known as. And now that he's on the Cardinals, he's got Arenado. Like, that's crazy. But – I don't think Pete's a 300 hitter, but I like that he strives to be a 300 hitter because the ball's going to jump off his bat. If yeah. he just puts the bat on the ball, the ball will explode off. I like his approach. I don't think he's going to hit 316, 317 anymore. Career high 271 average last year. It was very good, and Keep I think climbing. he could get better. Um, but I definitely think he's he's a drive the ball in old school counting stats. Give me RBI, give me home run, and uh, Exa yeah, absolutely. I'll be happy. As long as Lindor is doing Lindor, Nemo is doing Nemo, and all of the above, Pete Alonso just needs to mash, and that's what he does best. Let's get that guy some protection. He put up 55. Somebody step up. Somebody hit 30 <laughs> this year for Pete, but I think that's that's all we got in the polar bear. 
I love it. Absolutely. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow for another Player Profile Projection. Tune in. And for Jolly, I'm Jerry. Let's go Mets. Let's go Mets. We'll see you soon.